Champs High School Sports Show is presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dig. Thanks for checking out State Champs High School Sports Show. My name is Lauren Plant, this is Jenna Skelsky, and we are your guides as we explore what took place during the month of February in high school sports. We are bringing you highlights and more from the Midwest and a splash from the East Coast as well. In Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, and now New Jersey is where we focus our coverage. And the State Champs Sports Network is presented by Lawrence Technological University, located in the incredible Metro Detroit area, over 100 degree programs, 26 NAIA level sports. Sign up for a visit today at ltu.edu. Coming up, a look at one of the fastest growing high school sports in Michigan, girls wrestling. 24 seven sports Alan True brings you this month's football recruit report, top five dunks, momentous moments, and plenty of news too. We cover as many sports as we can and we built our brand on highlights. That's what we do and that's where we begin. Let's take a look at some of our favorites from the month of February. Let's begin in Trenton, Michigan with the MIHL Prep Showcase, which is a huge high school hockey event. We had a border war between Cleveland St. Ignatius who made a three hour road trip north to take on the 14 time state champ Trenton Trojans. First period action in Trenton already up a goal. And this is Brad Nemeth. He deposits this one into the top corner for his seventh of the season. Seven minutes to go in the final period. St. Ignatius down a goal. The senior Greg Langemeyer rips the one-timer into the back of the net. No overtime in the showcase, so we go to a shootout. Tied at one. After St. Ignatius missed, the senior Ethan Holt dangling on in. He'll score to make it 2-1 Trojans. Wildcats need to score to keep it going but the state champs player of the year candidate turns it aside. Trenton gets the W in this Wolverine versus Buckeye State showdown. I'm Lauren Plant, barn burner at Banker's Life. 4A state finals, undefeated number one for most of the year. Northwestern Tigers in their first season in 4A after winning 3A two years in a row. They were taking on number eight, the Lawrence North Wildcats, back in the finals for the second straight year, looking to win it all this time around. Back and forth we went, but the Wildcats opened it up with the long ball. Young finds Kalen Irvin wide open for a corner three, and after the first, LN was up 17-9. Tigers then went on a run. McKenna Layton passes it deep to Kendall Bostic. She's going to shoot the fadeaway and the touch. Layton had a game-high 25 points. Surveying and finding a gap, she'll go it alone, the floater falls. But the Cats were deadly from distance. Everybody touches the ball as they work it around to Smith. She hit five from beyond the arc to tie the 4A state championship record. But Young had ice in her veins, fouled with two seconds left, hit the first free throw, missed the second, but not enough time for the Tigers. Wildcats avenge last year's championship loss, get their first state title in school history, topping Northwestern in a thriller. Final score, 59 to 56. To Chicago now for the Public School League City Championships. We all want a state title, but this one for bragging rights in the Windy City. Morgan Park taking on Simeon Career Academy. The Jones Armory transformed into a high school basketball showstopper. Simeon won the conference showdown between these two rivals in a road win last month. Morgan Park looking to avenge that earlier loss. Brandon Weston finished with 19 points in the game, eight rebounds. He's got offers north, south, east, and west. But Simeon led 23 to 12 after one, thanks to good transition offense and sheer will. The sophomore Jalen drained with the contested lay-in. Morgan Park's Marcus Watson Jr. came to play in this one. Ball eventually finds him and he finishes. But Simeon held a 39-28 halftime lead. The long outlet to Jeremiah Williams and the slammage. 21 points, 11 rebounds for Williams on this night. Second chance opportunity. He is a beast to deal with. Ahmad Bynum got hot in the third. Back to back threes, he was feeling it. 22 points, five rebounds, 56-44 Simeon after three. But MP kept fighting. Good pressure, 
turnover. Watson Jr., the sweet finish. And again, solid defense leads to open offense, and it's Watson clear to the rim. In the end, another turnover, and it's sincere Callwood with the stuff for Simeon. From unranked to city champs, Simeon wins 81 to 76. Now, 10 city titles, good enough for third on the all-time list behind Marshall and Crane. To New Jersey we go, where the six-time defending MCT champs, Hunt took on Princeton. First period, Hunt forward Eddie Evaldi finds the back of the net four minutes in. Fast forward to the end of the period, Raiders sophomore Riley Frost adds another to the board. The defending champs lead three zip after one. Second period action, junior William Blanford makes the power play goal in the opening minute. Hunt would lead 5-2 after the second. Start of the third, Tiger senior Rocco Silvato came roaring into this power play goal. Silvato had four on the night, Princeton trails 5-3. Tigers tie at five, Silvato is on a roll and does it again with 131 on the clock. Princeton leads 6-5. Under one minute left, Hun holds their goalie. Princeton snags the puck and Austin McHale shoots and scores. With 7-5, your final with Princeton crown the new Mercer County tournament champs. To Indiana we go for the girls swimming and diving state finals. We'll jump into the 200 yard IM. Zionsville Devin Kitchell edges out Carmel's McKenna Lesky with a final time of 159.47. On to the 50 free, Elizabeth Brochure is from Evansville Wrights Memorial taking the W with a final time of 22.97. Next is the 200-yard free relay. Madeline Crispin for the Greyhounds comes in first with a 132-61. We'll end with the 100 backstroke. Carmel's Barrett Berglund with a final time of 53.41. Carmel Greyhounds will win their 34th consecutive state championship. I'm Lauren Plants with a recap of what happened at the MHSAA Team Wrestling Finals in Division 4. Clinton took down the three-time defending state champ, Hudson. Redskins' first state title in a boys' sport in school history. For the eighth time in the last nine years, Richmond and Dundee squared off in the D3 finale. But again, it's Dundee in control. They claim third straight state title. Next to Division II, the Lowell Red Arrows, a dynasty on the west side. Seventh straight state title dominating win over Gaylord. And finally, to Division I, Detroit Catholic Central going for its fourth straight title up against Davison. Two nationally ranked programs, only one could claim state champ CC with mitten supremacy once again. If you want to see more, we've got in-depth highlights and coverage in our annual Team Wrestling State Championship show. You can check it out at our website, statechampsnetwork.com, all of our social media channels, and of course, the brand new State Champs app. Download it today. All over the country, we're seeing the sport of girls wrestling really grabbing a hold but none perhaps more than in the Midwest. I took a visit to the second annual Girls Wrestling State Championships out at Adrian College in Michigan. I've covered high school sports for nearly 20 years. Never quite thought I'd see anything like this. Since the beginning, high school wrestling has been a pastime for men. The literal term mano a mano means hand to hand. But the Spanish created the saying to infer two men having a debate or two bullfighters in a ring. The origins of wrestling go back 15,000 years to cave drawings. Literary references to wrestling occur as early as the Old Testament and the ancient Indian Vita. Here in Michigan, sometime over the past decade, we began to see an unfamiliar grappler on high school wrestling mats. Every once in a while, you'd see a girl competing against a boy. Flash forward to February 2nd, 2020. While many Michiganders were probably preparing to either attend or host a Super Bowl party, at Adrian College, a phenomenon was taking place. The Michigan Wrestling Association hosted the second annual Girls Wrestling State Championships. This felt like a legit single day state tournament. It was big, but it didn't happen overnight. It had to build from the bottom up. Over the years, being on the MHSA Wrestling Committee, uh, we talked about starting women's wrestling. 
And Dave Dean, who runs My Way, who's run a youth organization, Dave Dean said, why don't you give it to My Way, let us develop it, and see it grow from there. So he did, they created a women's youth program, and now it was just, it was just time. Jamie Smith is the head coach at Frankfurt High School. As the only female head wrestling coach in the state of Michigan, for nine years she's headed up the traditional boys team with always a few girls on the side. Five brothers introduced her to the sport at a very young age. She wrestled in high school and in college. She married a wrestler, but this, this is new. 96, 97, 98, if there was one female in the gym, that was a big deal and you got a lot of looks. Um, so to then come here, I'm gonna be honest, when we did the, the uh, parade at the beginning, I've watched it with my brothers, I was pretty emotional for all of the girls, you know? And then to watch all of these men, to watch the male coaches supporting their athletes, it's overwhelming. When I first started wrestling, there was only one girl in the gym, it was basically just me. And if I saw another girl, it, it was exciting. And it's definitely grown. Women wrestling has grown since I started at seven years old till now. It's probably, it's gotten almost as popular as the guys. This year's event saw a huge increase in participation as compared to last year. They had over 250 competitors. Steve Babbitt's been in the sport for two decades at all levels. This is amazing. Completely blown away. I love seeing it. Um, and it's, it's, it's fun. The growth of girls wrestling has several contributors. The Olympics, more and more colleges offering the sport. And during the season, we're seeing several all-girls tournaments. The girls only tournaments this year statewide almost doubled than what it was a year ago. Um, two years ago you are lucky to find a couple and now uh, you may have to travel a little bit to find them but you could go almost every weekend and find a girls only tournament. Title IX has certainly afforded females here in the state of Michigan just as many opportunities as the boys for competition. But even with all those choices, for some, grappling is where it's at and all the ones we spoke to wrestle on their high school teams with and against the boys. It's amazing in a sense. I like the competition. I know that it helps me get better uh, strength wise. Uh, the technique is a lot different. Wrestling boys versus girls. Wrestling guys, they're more muscular and like, uh, like I wrestle heavier weights and girls, uh, they tend to be shorter in the this weight class, so I have to watch um, the way I wrestle a lot more. With guys, it's like headlocks and all that. Girls have a lot more flexibility. Uh, they're usually a lot heavier with their hips, and I don't really get that with the boys. They're more upper body strength, so it's nice feeling the difference there. A big reason girls wrestling is thriving is the dedication of those determined to give it a fighting chance. Mr. Kuhn is not only my high school wrestling coach, but he also coaches at Fowlerville, and he's been coaching me since I started wrestling, which was in fourth grade. I've always been someone to get into things that not normal people did. I was always athletic growing up, and Mr. Kuhn was just like, you know what? You should try wrestling. I remember the first practice, I fell in love with it, and I've been with it since, just because of him. He really is a huge part in my life. The big question is, what's next? Although not an MHSAA sport, they are involved. They're a presenting sponsor, so we're following all MHSA rules. The ultimate goal here is that this becomes another division in wrestling, not a separate sport, but another division, and the MHSA feels comfortable, and then when they're ready, obviously take it under their umbrella. I'm hoping, two years, I'm hoping that in two years we are at Ford Field with the boys. That next year we want to do some regionals and show again, here's the packet, we can run it just like we are with the boys and run alongside them and there's room at Ford Field for us. That's really our mission. Uh, number one mission of the MWA is obviously grow the sport. Part of growing the sport is growing the sport for everybody. That's what's, that's what's great about wrestling. 103 pounders, 285, males, females, blind, deaf, you can wrestle. <laughs> Because I used to do dance before, and I, that never has crossed my mind that I one day would be the top of the podium someday, and that day is today, and I'm so happy about that. In wrestling, In wrestling yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm Lauren Plant for State Champs. I'm on the Blue Devil football team, and that's a great place to be, because other colleges wouldn't let me be both a football player and a nursing student. And just because I'm a dog on the field, doesn't mean I can't take care of people. And man, do I love people. 
The small class size of LTU can give me awesome access to my nursing professors. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. Dictionary, an alley-oop is defined as a high pass caught by a leaping teammate who tries to dunk the ball before landing. It takes precision passing and timing to make it work. Here are February's top five dunks of the month. Alley-oop edition. Number five comes from New Jersey. The Patrick School Jr. Samson Johnson throwing it down. Nice scoop set up from Jonathan Kuminga. Number four, and these were the first points of the game for Norwell, Indiana. Will Geiger in perfect symmetry with his senior teammate, Connor Torson. Number three to Michigan, Imani Bates, considered by some the top high school player in the country. Oops, upside your head. He had 63 points on this night. Number two, back to Indiana. That's Bishop Lures to Marcus Hudson getting the crowd into it. Serious error in the throwdown. Number one to Chicago, Simeon power forward Jeremiah Williams receiving the inbounds. Get out of the kitchen, too much heat. And that is your top five alley-oop dunks of the month. Just like the feature earlier in the show on how girls wrestling is growing in Michigan, the sport really has meteoric growth across the Great Lakes with Ohio recently crowning its first ever team state champion, the all girls meet held at Hilliard Davidson High School in late February. Miami East took home the title with Olivia Shore leading a 16 wrestler contingent that put girls on the podium in six different weight classes. Nearly 250 wrestlers from 99 different programs competed in the event. Max Preps put out its list of the top 25 public school boys basketball programs over the last decade, led by the number one team, Chicago Simeon, which won three straight state titles from 2011 to 2013, earning top 10 national rankings each time. The list also includes Chicago's Whitney Young with two titles at number 11, Michigan's Clarkston High School at number 16, and Carmel High School in Indiana at number 18. There are dynasties, and then there are dynasties. All three of Cincinnati St. Xavier's relay teams won state titles, two of them setting new state records as the Aqua Bombers won their 12th consecutive OHSAA Division I Boys Swimming and Diving State title late last month, the 41st in program history. Cincinnati's Mount Notre Dame High School is unbeaten, was ranked number one in the final AP D1 girls basketball poll and number three in the nation by Max Preps. Dr. Scott Rogers is a finalist for the Jersey Mike's Naismith National High School Coach of the Year Award, which will be announced March 9th. Another Naismith nominee, Kathy Layden from Kokomo, Indiana's Northwestern High School. With spring right around the corner, almost time to get back outside, Max Preps released its preseason top 25. New Jersey's Donovan Catholic at 15. Huntley, Illinois finished at number 17. Indiana's New Palestine at number 18. And Michigan's Escanaba at 19. I'm Lauren Plant. That's February's In the News. Time now to take a look inside Lawrence Technological University. One of the great advantages in getting your degree at Lawrence Tech are the several tools to help prepare you for a rewarding career once you graduate. The Office of Career Services offers a wide range of resources to help you navigate your job journey. Whether you need assistance with choosing a major, writing a resume, conducting a job search, alumni contacts, the Career Service Office is there to help you in every way. When considering a university, do the research. Will you get the individualized attention you deserve before you graduate? Do yourself a favor. Check out Lawrence Tech. It's easy. Go to ltu.edu today. One of the great things about high school sports is that every once in a while, something magical happens. Whether it's a last second shot to win the game or an incredible gesture made to make someone feel really important. Let's check out February's momentous moments.
Number five, Benton, Illinois. Down 53-51 and under five seconds to play. Brad Hammond with the three ball off the window to send the Rangers to the regional title game. Now to Michigan for number four. Plymouth senior Sydney McKaig tore her ACL in October. In the final regular season game, she came in for one play, nothing but bottom, awesome. To Carmel, Indiana for number three. The football team collected enough money to buy their teammate Caleb a varsity letterman's jacket. Here they were presenting it in front of his classmates, teachers, staff, and family. This is truly what it's all about. Back to Illinois for number two, class 1A sectional semifinals. Four seconds left, St. Teresa down a point until Addie Fike was on a mission. Coast to coast and the game winning bucket at the buzzer over Lexington. That's incredible. Speaking of buzzer beaters, we're going to split number one and have two. Both from Michigan, here's 1A, Canton's Ben Stasiak from behind the backboard to beat Belleville. That was the team's second straight game one at the buzzer. Here's 1B, Flint Powers and Flint Carmen Ainsworth tied with eight seconds left. Carmen Ainsworth, Daryl Scroggins from half court, the steal and the unbelievable bucket. What a wild scene. And that is February's momentous moments. This is Alan True from 24-7 Sports with this month's Recruit Report. I'm going to start in Indiana, where wide receiver JoJo Johnson has made a commitment to Northern Illinois. Johnson had a couple of great seasons at Hammond Morton, but will be playing at Merrillville High School as a senior. He had 11 total touchdowns on offense a year ago and six interceptions on defense. We expect him to be an offensive prospect for the Huskies, but may see some time both ways as well as on special teams. In Illinois, a junior who is rising quickly is Arlington Heights St. Viator defensive lineman Jeremiah Pittman. He used a couple of winter camp performances to spring his stock upwards. He now has three offers from Power 5 schools. Iowa State was first, then Northwestern, and most recently, Minnesota. In Ohio, a pair of teammates are creating a little bit of a buzz in Rod Moore and Marcus Allen, two juniors at Clayton Northmont. Moore is a 5'11 safety with 4'4 speed, while Allen is a 6'2", 190-pound wide receiver with sure hands. They both have their share of FBS and Power 5 offers, but both, both recently picked up Wisconsin, and the Badgers are expected to be a major player for both. In Michigan, the big news has been the hiring of Mel Tucker as head coach at Michigan State. He's hit the trail running, especially now that he has a staff put together, and that has included re-offering some prospects inside the state, but also extending a new offer to Godwin Heights' Ruquan Buckley, a six foot six junior who could play either offensive tackle or defensive end. Buckley had been to campus before and visited with the old staff. We expect he'll get up there in the spring to meet with Tucker and his current staff. Then in New Jersey, we'll close it out with a commitment as well as the Rutgers Scarlet Knights picked up a commitment from St. Augustine Prep wide receiver Carnell Davis, a smooth prospect who we believe can be a go-to guy for the Scarlet Knights. With several major offers, including Auburn, chose to stay at home and play for Greg Schiano and company. For this month's Recruit Report, I'm Alan True. Hey, if you have the dream of playing college sports, Lawrence Technological University just might be the place for you to live that dream. LTU is located in the metro Detroit area of Southeast Michigan, and the renaissance going here is quite incredible. Downtown Detroit has so much to do in terms of restaurants, clubs, sports, it's awesome. And Lawrence Tech offers over 25 sports that compete in the NAIA. Student athletes are earning athletic and academic scholarships every day. Recruit yourself at LTUathletics.com. Time now for our fan cam clip of the week. And if there's not enough pressure already, it's a penalty shot. But this one was in sudden death overtime in the playoffs. In New Jersey, this is Ramsey High School's Tyler Botta giving his team the 2-1 victory over Middletown North in the first round of the NJSIAA slash New Jersey Devils Public C Tournament. That's February's fan cam clip of the month. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, and if something happens in March you think we should have on next month's show, email me, idea at statechampsnetwork.com, or 
communicate with us on all social media platforms. Just search State Champs Network. Please like, subscribe, follow, and most importantly, if you like what you see, share it. We want to send a personal shout out to all the freelancers, news media, and everybody in between covering high school sports. State Champs has been around for 18 years now, and we'd love to be covering the entire country. We need companies who desire that connection between those who love sports and want to celebrate the thousands of communities who love their high schools, big brands and small alike. Let's partner up and showcase these student athletes and celebrate their passion and dedication. Absolutely. We will see you next time right here on State Champs. State Champs High School Sports Show is presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare.